Hello and welcome to episode 95 of Unqualified Game Chat. I am your host, Azaro Lopez, and with me today is the Christmas angel himself, Spencer, the legacy. Hi, everybody. It's been a while. It's been like three weeks, and but there's a few things that we need to address before mm -hmm. going in on the show. One, Noisy Pixel got a redesign. Mm -hmm. Facelift. It mm -hmm. broke for like a week. Yep. <laughs> it but, was, but it's But three, it's fixed now, and we can now reconvene to talk about 2023. <laughs> Hell yeah. Meet in 2024. Talk about 2023. Because we're in the new year, by the it way. Was a, it was a fascinating year, I will say. It felt like um, three years. It was, it was a long one. <laughs> so a lot happened. And yeah. uh, we saw a lot of significant growth with, with our show here and with everything we do in our daily careers. So I'm happy you and I are, are safe and six and, and and our careers are are thriving mm -hmm. uh, because it wasn't the case for the entire game industry. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of layoffs. Um, yeah. It sucks. Mm -hmm. it, it really sucks. Uh, you know, I had this idea that will never work because of egos. But yeah. if you know about like all the little sites, the little GameCouch.coms around the world, um, I love the Game Couch will always. <laughs> Always exist. <laughs> you yeah. have whenever you go to them, you have one to two writers on there that clearly are writing all the content. All of it. Yeah. All of it. Okay. All been there. Now any look at any site. Look at your siliconera. Look at your uh Gamatsu is clearly run by one person. Um, but look at look at your cog connected, your hey poor players. Look at all those sites. You'll see one or two people that are writing literally all the content. Now, what if Dear listeners, we all came together. Those one or two writers created a website of our own. Fucking dominated. That'd be crazy. Just industry. have the entire industry. It would 100% never work because of egos. You're 100% right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ego. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone's Everyone like, would clash what? all I can't, the time. Yeah. What? I can't fucking get that review code? Fuck off. I'll go yeah. somewhere else. Like, oh, it's it's 100% about egos. Oh. All the egos, all the different ideologies. It would collapse I, within a month. But it would I, be... A, dare you to invite someone into your website and try and tell them that their old PR count contacts to CC you in all for future uh, uh, conversations. Oh, I dare you to ask yeah. a writer to do that because they will not. I'll tell you that because everyone is so self self fulfilling. Um, when I started Noisy Pixel, I made it a thing because I knew how like chaotic it gets with PR people when they get other writers' contact uh, contacts. I just was like, I'm your main point of contact. If you need anything else, you can go to Bailey. If you need anything else beyond that, you can go to Mark. Like I lay it out for every new PR person just in case because lo and behold, they'll reach out to a little staff writer and say, hey, would you like to review this game? That person did Yes, I would like to. And then they yeah. start, they already yeah. redeemed it. And you're like, well, I can't explain to the person. They redeemed it without my knowledge because then I look like I don't know what I, I'm doing. I never even knew about that game. Yeah. Or worse, you got someone who's like selling codes or like, mm, oh, yeah. Been around the block there. Selling Tasted that or, forbidden fruit. They leave the site and they're still communicating on behalf of the site. There's Ugh. all these situations that happen there, all the time. There's, there's so many like, behind there was an issue not too long ago about a um a guy using the website he was at to bring his girlfriend to like e3 or something and honestly like i remember it being such a huge deal back then and he had to like say he's sorry and they like threw him away from the site but mm -hmm. honestly like like she because re she received a press patch but in my head it's like well she probably helped. I mean, he still did the content content. Uh, yeah, I just don't think that's something to like really grill someone on because one in this industry, when you're writing every day, every night, if you do have a significant other, you do stop. You, you don't really have time for them. 
and it sucks because you're already you're always reviewing and it looks like you're just like playing video games and like they'll tell their friends oh he's playing video games again but really you're working you know yeah. so and unless you've like done that you can't explain no this is work video games yeah 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 different. i don't necessarily want to be doing this because who is going to believe that if they yeah. like don't yeah yeah i don't want to be playing this game but i am it's kind of fun yeah. um but yeah you're absolutely right so I could see how the allure of going to an out of town place, uh, getting a free press badge and just having your significant other there while you go to your preview events and stuff. Yeah. I a, it's it. like, oh, it's the reward for you putting up with it. B, it's like, oh, now you can get some perspective on what I do so that when I do it, you might go, oh, so this is yeah. like actually work. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. I do think it's fine. And and maybe have her carry your backpack or, or him. Yeah. have one of them or are they are they have anyone make anyone. them carry your stuff not that um, you can because ether will forever so oh yeah, yeah yeah it doesn't work um with that said uh let's get into the actual show because we do have to talk about our game of the year and your game of the year so uh and your your is the, the royal uh the the view the viewers the listeners who commented yeah. On our thing three weeks ago, I believe. On our thing what's that weeks. thing in the sense where it goes? Do you know who killed Mister Burns? And then it, it goes to like uh, <laughs> wake up and he's like, "Ah, oh, you know, no, try now. <laughs> what's your game of the year?" Oh, I, I don't um, know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so should we start with ours or start with theirs? Start with theirs. Let's uh, yeah. Let's get okay. Let's, yeah. DC Fat Cat. Mm-hmm. Start start with the 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 man, the myth, the legend. Um, sorry. On a personal note, he says, "Everybody one two switch brought me drunken weed smoking, broken emotionally. F- oh, brought my drunken weed smoking, broken emotionally family together that I cannot have done in the past." We were all up seeing my mother-in-law, and she had to go to the hospital. Wait, what? I took care of the kids. uh, I guess. (laughs) She did the quick draw too hard. Shoulder popped. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I hope hope your mother-in-law's okay. (laughs) She just danced too hard. You know, sometimes sometimes the draw is a little quick. A little quick. It's too competitive. Couple drinks. <laughs> um, all right. So yes, uh, one two. Everybody one two switch. Got no love from Nintendo, but got some love from somebody. DC Fat Cat. DC <laughs> Fat Cat. Um, he used called... to be someone else. I don't remember. Yeah. I think it was like was Crab something. It was... I don't know. It's okay. We... You're DC Fat Cat now. You're DC. I don't know. I think he changed that because that's we kept saying his name. Result, I'm hoping that's not the case. I don't know. <laughs> it's legally DC Fat Cat yeah, now. It's legally. My uh, name is DC Fat Cat. <laughs> uh, we have Com Dua FGC that says, uh, I finally beat Xenoblade Chronicles uh, DE uh, Definitive Edition this year. So I, so I guess that's got to be my top game. Um, but for actual t- 2023 games, uh, Street Fighter 6 and Mortal Kombat 1 are tied for first place. Uh, Street Fighter 6 won a few uh, spots That's in our cool. staff um, games. Jahan made it his one first game. Uh, a little bit disappointed in Mortal Kombat 1, though. Me too. I no would joke. say Street Fighter 6 comes out on top for me in that. It, as as a as a as a fighting game, I don't know what it was, but it just didn't. Uh, um, I don't know. It just wasn't enough different from uh, yeah. eleven. Uh, yeah, it was like the Crips gone. It's like here's a gotcha system, and the online board game is just like the worst part of Smash Bros. Ultimate. Like the yeah. board. Ugh. I don't know. Characters are fun. I like Omni Man. That's I, I, yeah, that's the thing about Mortal Kombat is that like, I can't deny that it's like a visually nice looking game, but and gory. I mean, that's I kind of like, like I like the go- I love the gore, but I think it's way less fun when they're going for photorealistic visuals 
then it's just like oh this is just like less like fun this is just like online evil video like when, yeah, when it's sad. cartoony it's like a the characters are more visually recognizable and i saw the character select screen at first i was like i don't know who ha-, like i can't tell half these people just look like people like mm. I, they don't look like like the yeah the more stylized versions of like i would say around 10 that stopped started going away but 10 still had stylization but yeah but when it's photo real it's like the blood's less fun because it's not as cartoony so it just looks like weird kind of it's like off-putting but it's still cool but i don't know i wish they'd go back to a more colorful less realistic visuals just because i think it's more uh, they charming. never will they never, never will. will but i think it yeah. looks cooler but know. street fighter six's character designs yeah pretty good yeah. honestly a bunch of the new characters i was like they're kind of boring looking but like at least they are distinct visually like i'm like wow yeah each I can tell from one look at each character, I'm like, this is their vibe. This is what their their thing is. That's I think that's I good. honestly think Tekken Eight has a chance to kind of just dominate for a while. Possible. Well, automatically because it has that um, the three D uh, the three D aspect of the fighting, it's yeah. already different than any fighter that's available. You, we don't have a Soul Caliber to compare it to. Yeah, um, we don't have a bloody so. roar. You know, it's. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have what, what's that Sega game? It's fighting Cobras. We don't, we don't uh, have that. Yeah, or vir- Virtual Fighter or yeah, anything like that. Yeah. Um, so that sucks. But uh, yeah, Street Fighter Six, great choice. Mortal Kombat One, pretty good choice. It's a very pretty game. Yeah. Um, Cano Cano Sis Player fifty one fifty two says Tears of the Kingdom it lived up to the hype for him. Uh, Final Fantasy 16, love the music story and uh, the, the dominant battles. Um, an interesting choice, uh, Pikmin 4. Charming and, and best I one I yet. I wish I played Pikmin 4. I played it for an hour and I had a lot of fun. I just had to move on. I I think I I did, I do agree that from what I played, it's like a, a very fun game. Yeah. Uh, but all, all Pikmin, all Pikmin are like incredibly charming. It's like um, the sleeper Nintendo series where it's like, it's not Mario, Zelda, Animal Crossing, it's, which is weird. Animal Crossing is like one of the biggest ones now, but it's not one of those, like the big on all the, mm. it's the one everyone plays. Even people who don't play games play it like, but it is, it's consistently good. It's consistently, it seems to sell well and it's always changing. Like each sequel feels iterative on the pre- previous one. So I would call it the little Nintendo's biggest sleeper thing. That's, doing really well i'm happy did you play uh tears of the kingdom i did i liked parts of it a lot i loved the building i loved running around and shit and i played breath of the wild at launch so it's been enough time that i was like yeah this is pretty much the same map but it's been so long for me and i never replayed it that i'm like it feels fresh enough to me but i completely understand anyone who's like this is i played this recently or i remember it better because as we've said before we play a lot of games so like you're yeah. constantly like your short-term memory of games is constantly resetting and you're for, like forgetting stuff or overwriting it's, it, it with stuff. yeah it's kind of interesting when you're when you're talking to someone about a game that maybe you reviewed or even played and you kind of rely on them to bullet point remind you of what you liked about the game and you're yeah. like oh yeah that's that's so why I really like. You're like oh, shit, I forgot about that. That yeah, rocks. I fucking yeah. I, like it's been so long since Breath of the Wild. Like I played Breath of the Wild in my York University dorm in like 2017. Oh shit. Where when yeah. I was what 21. Yeah. And now I'm 27. So <laughs> and I'm like I've been through like three houses since the not Fire Emblem three. I sh- <laughs> I've literally been three living spaces since then, and like how many jobs and how so like in addition to dozens of games so i'm like when i when i got to the map i was like i i honestly don't remember if this is different at all like yeah. or if this is new or whatever. like i have no clue so that helped and i i enjoyed i think the building was like flawlessly fun the building part i think there was a lot of like small stuff that kind of bugged me over time but i think overall it is an excellent game so yeah yeah i i didn't even i didn't even try i i played breath of the wild and it's was a retirement in, game wasn't into it and uh but you know well, what? I hope this is a new direction. I hope that, like, I know it is, but I'm saying I hope they also do smaller, like, classic ones in between. 
which yeah. I'm assuming they will because they can't just do one every seven years of Zelda. That's not going to fly. Like that Link to the Past one was kind of fun. Yeah, that was delightful. Do do you should like uh, I I own it and I haven't played it, but like Link Between Worlds, where it's like Link a smaller Worlds, yeah. like 3DS game. It's the classic system. Blah blah blah. Do stuff like that in between and little remakes like Link's Awakening, and I think people will be happy. But yeah, yeah, I I it's it's interesting. Um, they put out um, kind of the Nintendo. Um, financials and it seems like they're doing really well yeah and i i i can only attribute it to be like they seem to release a game like every two months yeah like a first party game but the quality behind those games is like no other publisher would <clears throat> go back and release super mario rpg i'm sorry yeah sony would never fucking do that sure. sony hasn't even brought <clears throat> legend of Dragoon. Yeah, specific. I mean, they brought it to they, they brought it to PS Five digitally or whatever. But they they what haven't broken, spent that type of. Anyway. Yeah, they didn't do anything to it. And I think it was broken when they when they launched it. <clears throat> Such a stark difference. Yeah, it's it's like Nintendo is doing things on a budget and seeing an actual return. Sony is just pouring money into these huge yeah. things, and not only that, but. To support these large budget titles, you're you're going to see a, a shift in the industry where they can somehow recuperate those funds, whether it be yeah. through microtransactions, DLC, or getting you to buy the game again. They're going to find a way to to make their money back. Uh, yeah, that's true. And and that's and that's why we have all these live service games now because games are costing 200 300 million dollars to produce and sooner or later that's not that's not going to be uh sustainable yeah whether it crashes or something i don't know but it's not sustainable we, and they want to pay their developers living wages and that's also very difficult in the in the past that's, like that's especially combined with the yeah. enormity of the budget yeah it's yeah. Uh, and then you have your marketing budget and then you have oh, these other these other uh, ways that it's connected to um, the game's release. Uh, it's uh, all feels a little out of control. Yeah, I, I do. I do like some of the best games like, I mean, Zelda's Awakening on Game Boy or even like the Mario on Game Boy. The only reason why those games were ever like created, and this is like known history in, in gaming, but it's because a developer stayed after uh, mm. and started working on their own project. Like yeah. clearly a lot of like the best projects that we've seen were developed by or at least started off by a single developer working in their spare time, not getting paid for it. Out of passion, to, yeah. Today in a, in a big organization like like sony or or microsoft you will never hear a story like that mm -hmm. i don't think you'll hear because if you, someone came out and said oh yeah um i started working on this god of war spinoff in my free time and then uh sony uh decided to pick it up uh but the moment so, that they hey, that you <laughs> oh what you were working on games unpaid why would you do you know it's like the the narrative kind of is kind of shifting away from anybody uh, pushing, pushing for that that creative itch to to modern develop. Modern would be like, I got fired, so I have time to. I wanted to make a thing of this thing that I like, but since yeah. I got fired, uh, I had time to make an indie game that looks similar with the concept, but is legally distinct. Yeah, like that seems like that's the more modern equivalent. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's what you like to hear, and. I think Ubisoft Montreal is one of those studios that sees a lot of like people go Turnover. in. Yeah. Developers go yeah. in, they get their experience and then they go right out and start their own indie studio. But Canada is definitely a different beast in that they support stuff like that. And we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're introducing too many uh, facets into this conversation. I guess, I guess the bottom line is like uh, the industry's in a weird place right now. It is. I hope we find a good way forward, but last year was rough. Last, so. year, last year was rough. So I when I, when I say that I'm happy that Spencer and I are in a good spot, yeah. I, I am definitely very happy. 
Um, so moving on, uh, Nan Nanora says my first Dragon Quest was eight. I bought it for Final Fantasy. I bought it with the oh, they didn't say oh, anything. For the 12 demo? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, the I remember that demo. it came with the 12 demo. Uh, Final Fantasy or sorry, Dragon Quest eight is excellent. It's one of my favorite Dragon games Quest, ever. Dragon Warrior eight. It was Dragon. It was once they become Quest Nine, like DS kind of era, like Monsters <sighs> Joker. I think some somewhere around there. I didn't know that the yeah. we we got a few um we got a few monsters titles that I didn't even know that were localized. I was looking into yeah. that series and uh, one and two, we got there's a there's a couple entries that I didn't even fun. know where it came west. So I, yeah. I I wanted to dive deeper into that. I did I did end up buying the new one too. So it's so fun. So, I wish it so, came better. Yeah, that's like why <laughs> that's like that's like my criticism because everything about that game is addictive. Like it is. You get the cycle of just like making new stuff. Nothing holds you back. You're yeah. never it's not like uh it's it, it's you're always progressing and you're always getting better. And I just love those games. I I I'm I'm at the point where with with games like this, I, I don't like roadblocks, you know. I just yeah. like the the, the I know what I want to do. Let yeah. me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Um, so uh, Nursia says, Potionomics, very charming characters. Game is a tad too easy and random, but makes me excited for a follow-up. Potionomics, I believe, is published by Exceed. Um, but uh, yeah, Exceed published it. Uh, for hmm. um, It's developed by uh, Rocious Games. I think they're like an animator group. And... Yeah, it's like a shop running uh, RPG. Sadly, yeah. we didn't review it on the site. And I, I, whenever this game is brought up, I always like kind of get bummed out. Uh, yeah, I, would... I, I didn't even know this existed. Yeah, it, it's a fun, it's a fun game, or it's a l- fun looking game, and I, it's just one of those that I that come up a lot more than you would expect. Yeah. Um, I forgot says, I put a lamp back here. So now that when I have the white dock open, I look really white, and I'm like, oh wait. I can just do that, and I like look normal the, now instead the, of the, the the lamp was such a good move. Yeah, like that's that's without the white dock. <laughs> that's so much nice. There's a lamp behind my monitor. Ah, uh, oh, wonderful, easy. Um, and then Narcia says World of Warcraft season of discovery. I have no idea what that is. That is brother, but, but I'm I, jealous. I'm you know, the only Warcraft that I really invested myself into was three, and no one talks about that anymore. I've never played a damn one of them. Yeah, it was like we would go to like these those those PC arcade or PC like uh, cafes, and we'd play Warcraft Three and Counter Strike uh, LAN, and That's it was badass. fun. And then I, uh, Sand, I, I Sandstorm was playing. was playing on constant loop. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my friend's brother would play World of Warcraft while I was at his house, and I would. We would he would go to the bathroom and whenever he did we would go on chat and say evil things and get him kicked. <laughs> so that's my experience with anything Warcraft related. Really. Yeah, <laughs> it's just that. <laughs> um, dead and alive ninety one sixty six says Wo Long Final Fallen Destiny. I heard uh, about that. I played that yeah, one. I reviewed it and hell yeah, I you know I'm putting on a top five and I really struggled not putting Wo Long on. Uh, mm-hmm. Because it was one of those games that not only did I play through single player, but after it came out, I played through with a friend. And like, I do. It's a game that makes you feel so badass. Like, mm. I know, I know Dark Souls and Neo and all those games are like for that, but it does, it takes it. It, uh, yeah, what, what Dead and Alive says, it's, it's got problems and it's not as great as Neo 2, but I still love the combat. Same. It is not good as Neo 2. But I don't play the Neo games. But the action systems, oh, so satisfying. The 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 mission structure, the bosses, fuck. Like so satisfying. Um yeah. Hi-Fi Rush, it's an it's excellent in every aspect, but it's not number one because I didn't like the mandatory parry sections. I haven't I, played I've only played a few hours of it, but I really liked it from what I played. Oh dude. What the problem with that game is like once you do play it, it's like one of those games again that doesn't hold you back. So there's yeah. no natural stopping point. You just want yeah. to keep playing. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, there's no like, oh, I could stop here for a little bit and, and play something else. No, because you want to to continue it. It's like a yeah. like a 3D platform, like a ratchet and clank, you know, like 
It's no, just you seamless. never want to. You're like, I can just keep yeah. going. going and going. You never want to stop playing. You're not playing 14 Ratchet anymore, and you got to work. <laughs> <laughs> going and going Something and going. needs to get done. It's the um, worst shit and, in the world. And uh, Final Fantasy 16, which is on my list. Loved, loved the game. Um, I liked it. You it's know, good. you know, I. It's weird. I have a lot to say about Final Fantasy 16, and maybe we should hold it off for like an actual Some, episode on final maybe, fantasy 16 i don't even really still like six months later i still don't even know where i 100 percent stand on it so, yeah yeah i would i would love to discuss be that game with you because from a from a narrative standpoint i i loved it mm-hmm. but um i do think that it retains too much too much mmo s- systems mm. and and that's why in my head I like what Yoshi P did with the game um, and the series, but for the next entry, I do hope someone else kind of takes over. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh new voices. Fresh new voices. A uh, new look at, at Final Fantasy. And... He's thriving with 14. Um, I keep thriving with 14. You know, but the thing is about me is like, I liked all Final Fantasies. Like, I liked yeah. 15. You know, there's not, I, I don't hate any. I don't, I don't hate, hate any. any. Even 16, where I'm not sure how I feel, but I minimum I like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love 15. I I know that it's not like base game is not really finished, and it has all sorts of. But I love 15 so much. Yeah. I th- you know sometimes sometimes when I'm high, I'll yeah. like have like these like thoughts about Noctis and and the group like yeah. eating dinner and stuff, and like I'll just remember those scenes and I'll I'll, I'll I come to tears a little bit. Yeah, you like the last campfire before the because ending. if. The, yeah, if if uh, if they were trying to uh, convey what it's like to be a group of dudes on a just together, like it's perfect, it's perfect man. Yeah. That's that's how like it's the peak male friendship yeah, game. Yeah. Um, okay. So next up, we got Justin Anime, um, our Justin favorite, anime. iconic legend, iconic, uh, wanted dead. It's a game by. Did you ever play What Did Dead? No, I'm looking up. I think the developers of Ninja Gaiden worked on it. Anyway, wasn't received very well, but I agree that it it was it was just a fun, stupid action game, and that's what they wanted to do, and they did it, and they did yeah. it with class, and they did it. Uh, I don't know. I feel like on the on the surface, like Metal Gear Two kind of a silly game like if you if you just pay attention to all the silliness that they do and i think wanted dead in capital uh capitalized on that like we're gonna have this serious uh skin of a game but the the, oh, yeah. the yeah it's it's goofy i'll check it's, it out it's overly gory uh there's yeah. a lot of like funny jokes and i don't know that sounds interesting Let, i'll check it let's see what justin anime has to say about it um Wanted Dead is almost universally hated, but the cast is fun and has heart. The gameplay is almost puzzle-like in its execution, and the story means more if you take the time to explore the base after each mission. I really loved it, and I'm sad I may never get to see more. Um, You might, because that publisher is, uh, I believe they're Chinese, and they got that money. Uh, there's Like Canada, I think there's a lot of support for developers in China. Yeah, um, yeah, that's something Canada's good at is yeah. for supporting the arts. Oh, their um, their their government just gives yeah. gives we any 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 develop software, um, yeah. tons of tons of support. Um, S Hyde said didn't play many games that released this year, but mine would be Tears of the Kingdom because they're a basic bitch. They say yeah. uh, it was. It was much better than I expected when in thinking just more Breath of the Wild, but despite that, I ended up being enthralled by the world all over again. Final Fantasy 16, flawed, but with but has some high narrative points, much better yeah. than the sum of its parts, I guess, despite an awful translation. Eh, I could see. Is that the, the, the pro- I don't think the translation was awful. I think it was written first in English yeah. and translated to... Japanese. Japanese. That's what the voice acting was too. It was originally yeah. English, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, I think even in Japan, there's no it's dubs. Weird. There's no dubs. That's strange. Yeah. They That's said it's because odd. they used mocap. Oh yeah, mocap's really big now. Yeah. 
Uh, I think. Uh, I, I think, think I, I was talking to Bailey the other day about it, and I think they shouldn't have put so much budget into the audio, and it's like because everything is voiced, but you end up skipping so much of yeah, that. Yeah, like I'll have the side quest and shit. I'm like, I don't, I just want to. I don't fucking let's, care. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure um, you performed this one really well, and I'm sorry, but I I got a I got four more games this month. <laughs> we got um. They also say uh, Mario RPG Wonder um. Oh, I wish I played Wonder. I don't I even know what Wonder is. Play. Mario Wonder. Oh, yeah. I, oh, my it. God. That's one of those games I put on and I couldn't put down for the night and it set me back pretty far. This like, is it, awesome. I never picked it up. I got to get to it. Um, Star Ocean 2, three-way tie for those three games. Um, mm-hmm. I agree. Um, Mike Methot. 256 says the Byton Kaidos remaster, although it would have been a hundred times better if they kept the English voices and Star Ocean 2 remake was also an incredible game. I agree. Byton Kaidos remaster. That was a, that was a fun release. I, I was one of those games. I imported it from uh play Asia, but um, Are those yeah, remasters yeah. The way to play it now. Is that the ideal way? Yes. If you're, if you're going to play it, um, yeah. but like, like uh, Mike said, they did remove the English voices, but hmm there's the argument that they were really bad. I, yeah, I can li- like, I, if I don't have any nostalgia for it, the English, that, like that's fine. <laughs> um, Lozy says, um, nothing this Lozy. year, nothing this year, because obviously when I buy something, it has to be good, a good deal. Ah, okay. Um, that's fair. Games are expensive. So, um, Final Fantasy seven, uh, Remastered, integrate. Ah, it, oh, RI. I was oh, like, yeah. Remake, yeah, yeah, remake, integrate. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, God, Those that ending. That ending of that there, ending man. of integrate was yeah. so freaking good. The second that they showed up, I was like, oh, we're doing third. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was getting like my friend was watching me play, and they didn't know who they were. They were like, who? Is? I was like, that's from the PS2 shooter sequel. That's really. That's really interesting. I kind of suspect I was like, you know, they reference Advent Children in the main game, so I was like, okay, the compilation thing, I guess. But then, uh, yeah, then that happened, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be weird. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're. I feel like they're making things more difficult for them, but we'll find out. The game is so close. The if this uh, game rebirth. treats all the other games canon, where the fuck Cisne? Yeah, give us Cisne. Bring me? her back. She she became the love of my life in yeah. uh and you guys threw her away. And you threw her away. It's fucked That's up. not fair. That's uh, up. Sob Fire mm-hmm. uh says Octopath Traveler 2. Fuck yes. I didn't play that. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, dude, it is rare. It is rare for me to beat these hundred hour RPGs. It and, takes yeah. and I remember it was like maybe five days until embargo for Octopath Traveler 2. And I looked at my playtime and it was like 96 hours. And I thought to myself, how? Yeah. And there were several nights when I was playing where I saw the sunrise and no other game has done that to me for quite a long time. Um, yeah. But Octopath Traveler 2 did that. There's two extremes when you're a game reviewer and that's you right before embargo, you're like, I put 80 hours to this. How did I do that? And there's, I feel like I'm playing this for three weeks and I have 14 hours in it. What the fuck is happening? Yeah. Like, those yeah. are the two extremes. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I, I'm right there with you. Um, mm-hmm. Octopath Traveler 2 is, oh, there's this, there's this moment where you get the fucking ship too and you, you build it and, oh, it's so good. I love this... the HD 2D style though. So one day I'll play them. Uh, did you play Star Ooh. Ocean? Where's Dragon Quest 3? No, I've never played a Star Ocean ever, I don't think. Oh, oh wait, no, I played one. I played the one two years ago, one year ago. Divine Force, the recent oh, one. The, one of the most hated ones. Was it? I had. A good, I was like, maybe it's because I've never played a Star Ocean ever. I was like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> uh, was it Divine Force or it's like the? Maybe it wasn't Divine Force. No, I think Divine Force. Was it was like Faith and Faithless. Oh, Faith and yeah, that one was like yeah, Divine Force. People like Divine it, Force. Yeah, Divine Force was last year. Oh, uh, that was the one where the guy flew around and everything. And yeah, yeah, he's a big blonde man. Yeah, I never really liked his design. Like, 
Cause yeah, because I played it and I was I'd never played Star Wars and I was like, all these characters look like they came from the the fucking labyrinth of Dark Crystal. They all look like Henson <laughs> people. It's really interesting. <laughs> uh, um, Should I start with one if I play Star Ocean? Isn't the one remake good or the R or whatever? I think I have that. Yeah, that one's good. First departure, um, but it is it is a it does retain a lot of like the um, the classic gameplay elements. Uh, two definitely. Um, that was this year, right? The two remake. Yeah. You can play either one of those first. Um, okay. Yeah, I think nope. you're good. Um, Kirill, Kirill Neko says best game, best games, Hogwarts Legacy, Final Fantasy 16, and Persona Tactica. It's first Persona Tactica. Pretty wide swath of games. Yeah. That's like I, three very different. Very yeah. different. <laughs> very different games. I mean, they're all kind of like role-playing elements, I guess. So, yeah. Those are all good games. Oh, I mean, they also said Tactica, but they also said finally getting back to the my backlog, Tales of Zelia two, and the Terminator game. Is that the one by the Robocop people? Yeah, the Robocop game fucking rocks. So I will yeah. definitely play the Terminator game one day. I plotted Tales that. Zelia, Tales of Zelia two is one of my favorite games of all time. I I know it's not as good as Zelia, but um, one day I just I love those characters. One day. Um, Aaron sixty four ninety three says Hogwarts Legacy, Fate Samurai Remnant, and Star Ocean two R. Um, yeah, uh, you know Hogwarts Legacy again, a game I played for like fifty sixty hours, I believe, and uh, it was fun. Mm-hmm. Fun game, but I don't remember. I don't remember my experience with the game. Like, I actually have to think about it. Yeah, that that game one came out this year too. That's a- year it was yeah. a lot of stuff came out and a lot happened in the real world and it was a long year um yeah but yeah great games um mm-hmm. uh garano no says uh blasphemous 2 everyone seems to really like that game i've heard of um he he sobo says uh, armored core 6 pikmin 4 and blasphemous 2 i to play armored oh. core i own it i have it uh our our dude Brian says Alan Brian. Wake too. You know what, Brian? I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. you. Did you play it through it? I finished it like four days ago and 100 percent of it. And uh, oh, I started the Alan Wake, Wake remaster. A like, little section. <laughs> oh, I love. You know what? I like the first Alan. It has. It's definitely like a 360 game, 100. percent But I think that the first Alan Wake is really interesting and really cool and then you know remedy just remedy is just interesting everything they do i'm like this is weird i like it i'll try it so you know i respect sam lake and the crew Mm -hmm. all their weird ideas i respect the strangeness we'll get Mm -hmm. into that yeah uh chris mean dio says hogwarts legacy again great 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 game great time sync um X experience share video games says Baldur's Gate 3 and Armored Core 6. But for Baldur's Gate 3, since we haven't had another uh another one since in this list, um, I'll read uh <laughs> they said uh looked better than any other game this year, voice acted better than any other game this year, best writing of any game this year, more freedom and player agency than any game this year, better romance options. Hours, though. I don't know if I got that in me. I don't either, man. I wish I was nerdier, you know. That's the other thing is I'm not a huge D and D kind of guy. I've played it a couple times with people, but you know what really... I hate. What? And you know what? I'll get on my fucking soapbox right now, Spencer. Oh, we got an Azario tangent coming. Here it comes. Here it uh, comes. It's been weeks. It. You know what really grinds my gears? You know what grinds my gears? I'm Azario Lopez. You know what grinds my gears? <laughs> You know what really grinds my gears? It's when Western media places, your Kotaku's, your uh, your polygons, they'll they'll just they'll suck the tit of these Western RPGs, where they'll put out videos of like, um, listen to this uh, ball slap, and like they'll like show a video on their Twitters of like a character moving, and like you hear their balls slapping on. Yeah, so that's in Baldur's Gate Three. It's a feature in there. Because they're naked, but 
they're they're celebrating it and the fact that they celebrate the 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 constant celebration of having sex with bears and and having sex with God. like the first character you interact with and and all this stuff cool i get it but the moment you throw an anime girl in there it's like oh no yeah, oh no yeah. these are these creepy yeah. anime lovers well i'll call you a fucking creep for wanting to have it's sex a with a dog. bear yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, don't open, don't open that door. And, and you, you know what? There, but if you want to fuck 2B, you're going to hell. You're, go, you're going to hell. Yeah. Uh, it's the thing about Western media outlets too, is the moment you call them out, you're automatically uh, a loud un, a, uh, yeah. a, a nerd that, that can't be reasoned with. You turn, yeah. you the, if you just ask a quote, if you just Western say something, it's very hostile on yeah. all sides. It's yeah. very, everything's very divisive and hostile. It's I, a lot. I, I really attempt to see the, the, the various sides of any arguments. Yeah. Guys, I play, I play call of duty. I play all these, I play Western games. I'm there with, with everybody on normie shit, but, but try and try and stay, uh, on, uh, I don't know. I, it, it makes sense now why uh, Jap Japanese developers are like, I don't like the name JRPG. And a lot has yeah, to do with like this. I get that. Kind of others it. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. And that's got to suck. I mean, that's a weird thing. Like I see every day, I see people fighting like, well, Western media has always been really racist towards JRPG. So all the Western gamers, I'm like, whoa. Okay. <laughs> I am not, like, yeah. Yeah. Fucking JRPG people, we've been made fun of for liking JRPGs forever. What do you mean we're all being bad? That's you guys, okay? Because <laughs> I was playing Kingdom Hearts and yeah. Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, and everybody was saying that was lame and stupid. And I, I was just like, I don't care where it's from, it's cool. And th yeah. So now I, you're not labeling me the bad guy in that situation. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It sucks, but... uh Everyone's painting with wide brushes these days. Yeah. Wide swaths. And uh, it's it's a lot. It's a, I think the best way to play it to, it's unfortunate, but I think that the best way to engage with video games is just look up things that you think look cool. Trailers, maybe the occasional positive feature that you can like, oh, this person clearly likes this thing. I want to see why. And uh, never engage with anyone else who likes it unless you already know them as a person. Yeah. Never post yeah. about it publicly. And it, that's the, really the, at most tweet, like, I like this thing about this game. And then don't look at your Twitter for a week. For a week. Just walk away. We're in a good place. We're in a good yeah. place, media. That's good. <laughs> that's healthy. That's good. Um, yeah. Well, now, now let's go on to you. What is your yeah. game of the year? Uh, yeah. So for most of the year, it was Resident Evil 4 because I was like, I was at the camp. Oh, Resident Evil 4 doesn't need to be remade. It fucking rocks. And it, it does still. And this doesn't replace it at all. Mm -hmm. Resident Evil 4, the original, is a great, faster-paced, goofy arcade game. While Resident Evil 4, the new one, is a great, slower-paced, scarier Resident Evil remake kind of game. And they both exist parallel. And I couldn't be happier about that. That's the best-case scenario to me. I do think it retains its arcadey nature at the, l the last mission. Yeah. I think, I think towards that, the end it does, yeah. It kind of flips that switch. You're like, oh, this is Resident Evil 4, I remember. Yeah. Because at the beginning, <laughs> I was approaching it like it was the original Resident Evil 4, and I kept dying in the village. And I was like, oh, I yeah. didn't die once in the village No, in the original. So this is like, this you're, is fucking wrinkling my play, brain. Yeah, you're playing a game right now. Yeah. So, so once I got, <laughs> back, like, once I kind of, like, slowed down and I got into the flow, and I was like, I have to play Resident Evil 4 like it's not Resident Evil 4, which sounds silly, but that is true. I was like, oh, this fucking rocks. This is exactly mm -hmm. what I, I wanted to do. So that was mm -hmm. that was one. But I think my overall game, I think it really is Alan Wake 2. Because uh, at first with Alan Wake 2, I started playing it. I was having all sorts of technical issues on PlayStation, like falling through walls and shit. And I was like, this is kind of frustrating. And then it got patched and blah, blah, blah. And then the deeper I got into the game, the more I was like, I don't know. It was like it was I was like enveloped by it. It was so fun. And because I like, like I mentioned before, I like the first one. I like Control. I like uh, Max Payne. Well, like I like Remedy. They do cool stuff. Um, and I love. You like David Quantum Rush. Break? I never played that. That's the only one I haven't played because I didn't have an Xbox. Missing out. I gotta get to that. Um, 
but I love David Lynch. And I love Twin Peaks. Is one of my favorite things in the world. Yeah. So I was like, Helm Lake 2 is probably, but it's been a year of like Final Fantasy 16. I was super excited and then I was kind of let down. Spider-Man 2, I was super excited and I was a little let down. So I was like, I'm just going to approach Alan Wake 2 like it's like a fun little thing. And then I was, as I, maybe I should just approach all games like that from now on. But as I went through it, I was, I kept being pleasantly surprised over and I was like, wow, this is really subversive. This is really weird. This is really interesting. Um, and it really, like by the end, I was like, wow, you know, even if like things happen, I didn't understand on first glance. Maybe this is, again, my, I like David Lynch brain. So I, I'm used to being like, this doesn't have to make sense to me right now, as long as it makes sense to me emotionally. Cause I think remedy understands a lot of David Lynch and twin peaks homages. They just go for like weird and like cherry pie and like, mm-hmm. and that's fun. But Talking a lot backwards. of things don't understand that like David Lynch has a very surreal aspect of like his movies and shows are to me, they're like dreams where they don't necessarily make logical, consistent sense, but they make sense to your emotions. They make emotional the, sense. Uh, the Nicolas Cage one where he's like, this is my oh, leather yeah. jacket. Yeah, exactly. Like there's so many moments where you're like, this is weird. This is fucking strange. But like, you get it emotionally. And that's, I think Alan Wake 2 is like one of the only things that is Twin Peaks-esque that understood that Lynch thing where, again, I don't, I probably missed some stuff in the game and like didn't understand everything completely. But in the end, I was like, that was a completely satisfying experience. I feel emotionally fulfilled and I feel like I got everything that I needed to. And if I want to get more, like I can look deeper into like the manuscripts and blah, blah, blah. But I think it was an excellent um, adaptation of that sense of surrealism. And while still being very fun and interesting, so that is probably at the top. I liked a lot of like Resident Evil 4. I love Pizza Tower, incredible Wario Land esque game. I love Robocop. That was a huge surprise. Oh, very. I was yeah. like, this is probably going to be just like fun, but buggy or whatever. But it was just like the whole time. I was yeah. like, they, they get Robocop. This is exactly yeah. this is the only thing I want from a Robocop game was like blasting heads off ridiculously of like evil people. And cool like stupid goofy one-liners that rock and the theme playing occasionally and oh like over the top paul verhoven like capitalist wasteland of of a setting where it's not trying to be subtle or so it's completely stupid and like over the top because that's why i love about robocop yeah, like, i kept thinking when i was playing it i kept thinking about that video i sent you that was like uh robo need cookie it's yeah like- yeah robo one <laughs> Oreo. Like, I don't know what the fuck he's saying. I never said that. Was, oh man. But yeah, so I would say those are and Dragon Quest, like I said, you know, if it didn't for some reason not run well on a Switch, despite it looking very simple mm-hmm. visually and not I mean, really. Pokemon can't that, even run well on Switch, so yeah, that's fair. Um I yeah, I would say those are my big ones. Are uh probably I'll make two at the top and then uh, Resident Evil 4, Pizza Tower, Robocop, and uh, and uh, Dragon Quest and Like a Dragon Gaiden or Ishin. Both of those yeah. I, I think were equally excellent. Ishin is a little more dated because obviously it's, it's old. Yeah, an older game. But Gaiden I love this really game. Gaiden really up to the uh, excitement for yeah. Infinite Wealth. So close to the end of the year. Interesting release. And it was, uh, it, they did that game so smart because they were like. Here's a new Kiri adventure, blah, blah, blah. And it's during Yakuza 7, like a dragon's... Fuck, I don't... It's during 7. Did you <laughs> so, cry? Yeah, it's... Uh, I didn't cry, but I was... I felt it. I was like, damn, this is yeah. a man's spirit. Yeah. Which is like the most curious thing in the world. But I was like, okay, yeah. I didn't fully remember what was happening in Yakuza 7 because it's been like, what, two years? Mm. So having it take place during that with like little scenes of, I was like, Oh, I remember that. I remember that. So going into infinite wealth, I have a refreshed memory of seven, but I didn't have to replay seven. I, uh, I just played a cool new side adventure and I, uh, feel completely ready for infinite wealth, but those are mine. Um, I will agree that, um, resident evil four mm-hmm. is definitely on, uh, my list. Uh, along with Dead Space, I believe those two oh, games yeah. this really this year um, are probably perfect. Yeah. I, I, I even even now I can't think of anything particularly wrong with either of those games. 
Um, you can say, I, I mean, you can dig up something about it, but fuck, they're both so brilliant. Um, it was a good uh, year for war. No, definitely. Uh, and so, uh, but, but like, I would, I would call those like honorable mentions, my personal games of the year, uh, Octopath Traveler 2, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's a game that took me, that showed me that I'm still able to, um, get through these lengthy RPGs. And that's something that I really look for when I'm playing games as an adult. We're like 35 year olds who are like. I can still play football with the boys on Friday. Exactly. Like, I can still play an RPG. I'm, exactly. I can still play a long game. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, you know what else. though, but I have the mental capacity to also understand some of the nuances of these stories. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you that the writing, the writing is like so good. Mm -hmm. And it pains me on some levels that like Starfield got such a bad response because I will say that regardless of what you think about those quote unquote bad games, sometimes the writing is worth it, you know, mm. to, to look past the quirks of uh, the gameplay systems, just to experience a narrative that you won't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, I think a game like Starfield is a good representation of that is like, yeah, there's, there's, there's things that could be said about, about the the presentation and and the uh, and what was promised and what you got but i'll say the writing is like really good something like redfall though you can avoid mm -hmm. you can avoid so much because the writing sucks the gameplay sucks everything sucks about that game so pick and choose which sometimes games are rated lower for their gameplay but sometimes the narratives are what you really go in uh to to experience um but Starfield is not one of my game of the years. I'll say, uh, uh, Tevi, the, the Metroidvania, um, from, uh, Cree spirit. Um, I, I loved that game. Um, it's like a bullet hell Metroidvania. Um, I just like Toho games as well. So anything bullet holes kind of already a game that I would say is, um, mine. And you throw in like cute bunny girls and I'm, I'm there pretty much. Um, but my game of the year, well, Final Fantasy 16 is not my game of the year, but Final Fantasy 16 is up there as like a, a game that I have a lot of yeah. respect for from the, from the year. Um, it wasn't exactly what I needed, but it, it, it emotionally moved me. And that's, and that's again, something I look for. Yeah. Even and, if like, I don't know where I'm at with the game. I love Clive. Clive's great. Yeah, Clive's I great. can't, I hope they make another Dissidia and I hope he's in it. Like yeah. Immediately. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait. He was to be such a good character. There's a there's yeah. a few characters that would make good would additions to Dissidia. With Cloud and Noctis and even Benedict Benedicta. Oh man, I hope she did. She uh -huh. ah, she is such a great character. Mm. That was a uh, that was very surprising to me when I turned. There's just blatant like fucking in Final Fantasy. I was like, got yeah, a little hey. hard. Mm. I was that was the that was near the appendix, so I was uh, not. Uh, but uh, I was I was just like, damn, this, <laughs> this didn't happen on PS One. What the hell, hell's happening? You like you always there was always like the idea of like a nude code in Mortal Kombat, and yeah. everyone was like lying Tomb about Tomb Raider shit. nude code. Um, yeah. Tomb Raider nude code. Was I was like at the age one. where when I was going around, I was like, why would I want to see that? Yeah, <laughs> I just, trying to go I just want to play cool video games, dude. Uh, but my game of the year, Armored yeah. Core Six. Nice, yeah, that makes sense. You would do, like occasionally just DM me, and be like, "This part of Armored Core fucking rocks." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, like, I, yeah, I was like, "Oh, Zara's really liking it." <laughs> I remember one boss, one particular boss took me like seven hours to beat, and this is the me. first one. No, it's like the everyone said one. like the first one's really hard. It's like I beat. I was the, at the at the press event. I was the first press person to beat that Hell boss, yeah. Yeah. and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm done. Whatever." Um, you yeah, yeah, like, you were like, yeah. Yeah. "Yeah, I did." Kind of like, I got. I like rallied like the devs behind me because I was being <laughs> a little. I was being a little expressive, like "fuck shit, so close," you know. <laughs> um, so they were kind of watching me. 
Um, since this is going out tomorrow, I'll say a similar experience was at the like a dragon infinite wealth event mm -hmm. where the producer was standing behind me and Mark while I was doing the dating mini game. And he was watching me as I answered the questions and Mark and I were just laughing and just having a good time, ended up getting catfished. But I, I believe that his, him experiencing press people, our media, at least doing that was like a really nice uh, memory for him uh, yeah. because usually at press events, media people are kind of boring. They, they kind of just play the game and, and um, act. Uh, Which I get like, yeah, they're a little it, jaded. Yeah. They, they wait for the food to come out or the free, you know, it's, yeah. it's some, some events are like Not that. every event you go to and it's your full-time thing is going to be your favorite game or anything. Yeah. But yeah time, you're like, tired because yeah. you just got off a plane and that too yeah um but yeah armor core six uh such an amazing and brilliant action game that i could not put down uh for a second Hell yeah. and i'm, I'm we'll excited for whatever they do with that game in the future or that series i am i'm on board hmm. and that's it oh yeah i'll make sure to play it at some point so we'll we'll keep this under an hour guys thank you so much for uh, a wonderful new year uh, mm -hmm. unqualified game chat we'll continue to to make these and uh yeah continue to comment and hang out we're we're very excited about this yeah. year we can't hope to or we can't wait to uh deliver more episodes absolutely see ya bye everybody <laughs> Noise, 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 noise,